This material is made available to you by or on behalf of the University of Melbourne under Section 113P of the Copyright Act 1968. It may be subject to copyright. For more information, visit the University Copyright website. Good morning. Hope you had a good weekend. Today we will start a new section that is SEMO circuits, complementary metal oxide semiconductor. So that is CMOS. So overview of complementary metal oxide semiconductor circuits. So we will study structure of MOSFET, operation of MOSFET, MOS devices models. NMOS and PMOS transistors, CMOS technology, comparison of bipolar and CMOS devices, common source stage, common gate stage, source follower. So this is pretty much identical to BJT. So MOS also, CMOS, so what we are going to study is we are going to study MOS transistors, metal oxide semiconductor transistors. We already studied BJT transistors, that is a bipolar junction transistor. Now we are going to study another transistor that is called metal oxide semiconductor transistors. And then CMOS, in all the chip you will see CMOS design. And then we will study why CMOS is so popular. And then we also discuss the latest CMOS technology. Like people often talk about 28 nanometer technology, then 18 nanometer technology, 12 nanometer technology. So what, what is this technology? So all those are related to CMOS, not related to the BJT, that process technology. And then this is an example of a simple chip design. So we design our chip using Cadence, one software called Cadence. So we got license in the university. We use the Cadence for designing image, image sensors in my group. So this is an example how you will see the design. And then when you fabricate, your transistor would look like something like this, planar fabrication in your chip. And then, to start with, maybe we should study why we need a CMOS. Because we studied BJTs, bipolar junction transistors. Then we are going to study why we need a CMOS technology. So why CMOS technology? Comparison of BJT and MOSFET, so MOSFET transistor technology, from an analog viewpoint. If you check analog viewpoint, comparison feature, cutoff frequency. So if you want to operate at a very high frequency, still BJT is good. MOS transistor, so MOS FET is metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. So MOS transistor, we write only MOS transistor. So MOS transistor, the maximum speed you can get is maybe 50 gigahertz, maybe these days you can get much higher. but. The summary is uh, BJT will operate much faster than most transistor. Then, uh, so BJT is good. Cutoff frequency means maximum frequency you can operate. BJT is much better. Noise, thermal, about the same. Less 1 by F, more 1 by F. DC range of operation, nine decades of exponential current versus BB. 2-3 decades of square law behavior. So we know that the, the expression for the current. So this we will study. 
And then again, this is much better. Transconductance, larger by 10 times, smaller by 10 times. Small signal output resistance, slightly larger, smaller for short channel. See, this is slightly better for MOS. But the remaining all are much better for uh, BJT. Switch implementation. BJT is very poor. MOSFET is good. Capacitor, voltage dependent, more options. Technology improvement, slower, faster. See, this is the only feature. Switch implementation, poor, good. And then technology improvement, slower, faster. So these are the main two factors decided most will be ruling the electronics world. Because why this switching implementation? So when you use a, you are making a switch using BJT, we can make a simple switch. Like you connect your gate, very small voltage, then your BJT is a, there is no voltage. And then when you increase the gate voltage, then the BJT will conduct. So you can make a switch using BJT, you can make a MOS transistor based switch. So the most transistor based switch will be very good in terms of switching ratio. Means when you make it off, in the case of BJT, still some current will flow. But in the most, there will not be any current. So that made a big jump for most. So that is the reason why, why because today we got digital circuits. In the digital circuits, what's happening is you are switching on and off. Your one is, means one, maybe four volt. Maybe zero, one zero, maybe zero, maybe point one volt. So that is kind of a switch implementation. So when you implement a switch, most transistor is very good. So that is the reason most is ruling the world. Another thing is the process technology. So the process technology is very important. For BJT, when you fabricate a big chip, that process technology is developed, but not as faster as in the case of most technology. Most transistor technology is so advanced. That is the reason we have got Moore's law. You know Moore's law, the number of transistors in the chip will double every year. So still that is going on. So the process technology is uh, much faster in the case of MOS. That is the reason we got 180 nanometer technology, then it reduced it to 68 nanometer technology, then 48 nanometer, 28 nanometer, 18, maybe 12 nanometer at the moment, 8 nanometer technology is coming. Means oh, we all are talking about this MOS technology. So that is much faster. So that is an, another interesting thing. If you check the patent, I think the most type of transistor was patented first in 19, I think 28 or something, but it was not fabricated. That was an idea they patented, but that idea was not BJT idea, most. But then uh, later in the Bell Labs, people uh, made first BJT, not most. Then people made most. Actually, they fabricated, but then the technology advanced much faster for MOS. And then that is the reason we have MOS today. Mainly we have got, because of this reason, implementation-wise, the switching. Because we have got most of the digital circuits. Therefore, almost every comparison favors the BJT. However, a similar comparison made from a digital viewpoint would come up on the side of CMOS, this digital viewpoint, because we have got lots of digital circuits and digital implementation, then the switching behavior, that is the reason we have MOS. Therefore, since large volume mixed mode technology will be driven by digital demands, CMOS is an obvious result as the technology of availability. So in, in your chip, you have got uh, most of the electronics operating in digital domain. Then you got only a small analog domain part. So that is the reason MOS is the obvious choice. That's the reason we study. Then we are going to study how people made MOS transistor, because that is a fundamental uh, uh, aspect. Like we studied BJT, how BJT is amplifying the signal, how they came to the BJT kind of, see that idea, transistor, how they can make the transistor. First they made the diode and then they connected, you know, back to back and that, that type, you know, thinking. How they evolved, how the most transistor evolved. The best example is uh, taking a capacitor. So if you take a capacitor, capacitor is uh, two plates separated by a distance. Maybe you can put in some insulator as well. So when you separate two plates by a distance, what is happening is you got the air in the middle. So that is an insulator. Or you can make two conducting plates with some insulator in between. So this conducting plate, and then here what I am doing is I am going to take this as a conductive plate, maybe a metal, metallic plate. And then here I am going to get P-type silicon. 
So this is an, my another plate. Then here I have got some insulating material, maybe some oxide material, usually silica, glass. A thin layer of glass might be here that is uh, insulating. So when you have P-type silicon, so what is the majority carrier in the P-type material? Yeah, P-type material, we have got holes as the majority carrier and electrons as the minority carrier. Then what I am going to do is, uh, I am going to apply an electric field. So you connect a battery. So when you connect a battery, here I have connected positive. So here I have connected negative. See, here I have connected negative. Here is a holes. And then what will happen is, uh, here you get positive charges. Because this is positive. And then when there is a capacitor, what will happen is you get negative charges here. So where will you get these negative charges? Because P-type, you have got a minority carriers. That minority carriers will be attracted by this positive charge. So if you got four charges, positive charges here, you get four negative charges here. And it will attract minority carriers into this region. Then, so this is a minority carrier discharge. Then, now what I am going to do is... Uh, I got some static charge. This charge is not going to move because this is a DC voltage. And then uh, here it is constant, here it is constant. The, this is a static charge. Now my question is, uh, I want to move this charge. Here you got some accumulation. How can I move this charge? You know what I, my, my question? Somebody ask you, how can I move a charge? So what will you respond? Apply yeah, yeah, so if you can apply a potential difference, you can move this charge. Then what you can do is you can imagine, so the charge Q equal to C into V, fundamental equation, the charge stored here, that is equal to capacitance times the voltage. Then this is a plate area, so what is the value of capacitance? C equal to epsilon A area of the plate by D separation, which is equal to K times epsilon zero, means a dielectric constant, A by D. So if you apply a voltage, what will happen is you can apply maybe voltage between these two points, this point and this point. See, that's what I have connected two contacts here, one here, another one here. So if I can apply a voltage differ potential difference here or a voltage difference, I can move this charge. Because if you connect positive here, these electrons will be attracted to positive. But then you can see this flow, you can control using this voltage. So that's how it's acting as a transistor. You are using some voltage to control this current. So this idea maybe we can use for making a transistor. That is called a MOS transistor. So current prefers to take the path of least resistance, means this is a path. Then dielectric thickness. So if you put dielectric thickness equal to 2 nanometer, very, very small, this dielectric thickness, from this equation you can understand, your capacitance will be very, very high. See epsilon zero A by D. If it is two nanometer, it is two into 10 to the power of minus nine. So this can come up 10 to the power of nine. So you get a very high capacitance. The most structure can be thought of as a parallel plate capacitor with the top plate being the positive plate. So this is a positive plate. Oxide being the dielectric. So this is the oxide layer. So you got an insulating layer that is an oxide layer that is a dielectric and silicon substrate being the negative plate. See, silicon substrate being the negative plate. We are assuming P substrate. So that is the reason here we got negative charges. And then we can apply a potential difference, a voltage difference, then we can move this charge. So when you are moving this charge, we can control how much it will be moving using this voltage. So that is the basic idea behind MOS transistor. Then how people fabricate it. So this is a topology of a MOS transistor so then here, what we, they have taken is, uh, they take a P-type P-substrate, means P-type silicon. So P-type silicon, and then what they have done is, this is an insulating layer, oxide layer. Oxide layer is an insulating layer, and then this is a conductive layer, metallic layer. Then you can see, in the P-substrate, they have got N plus region. They dope with N plus region. So if you go back, here you can see, in order to make, you need two connections. So here you got a gate. See, this metallic plate, metallic region, insulating region. So metallic region, so if you come back, so you got the metallic region, insulating region. Then you got your uh, P substrate. So that is here. See, you can see the P substrate here. Then what you want is, you want to take 
connections from this point and this point or you can extend this one and then connect the take the electrodes out see these are the electrodes we are taking out and then from here you take another electrode from here you take another electrode so that you you can control the current in the channel using this voltage and then when you connect uh, something to the semiconductor like you got a semiconductor material then there is a problem if you try to solder directly a metal then you can't solder properly first one is you can't solder properly you can there are technologies which will enable you to solder but then there is an issue what is called a short key diode so when you have a metal semiconductor then that will form a short key junction so because of that in the chip what they do is uh, when you have something to be connected like a metal you are connecting to a directly metal is connecting to a semiconductor what they will do is uh, they will dope it with n plus because this is a piece of straight then they dope it with n plus and then they connect the metal and then this is an ohmic contact you get an ohmic contact again you get a n plus region and then you connect the metal so means this is connected to the piece of straight rather than just connecting a wire here that will not give you an ohmic contact ohmic contact means whenever you make uh, some contact you have to make sure that uh, that is obeying the ohms law most of the time what happens is uh, you make some contact when the material is semiconducting then it will not obey the ohms law so if it is not obeying the ohms law means uh, you might be getting some other effect like diode effect you have to be careful so to get rid of that one they dope it with n plus and then they connect the metal so that you get an ohm ohmic contact here also you get an ohmic contact which will obey the ohms law and then you got the channel here now so when i represent it so this one they call it as gate this metallic plate and then one side is called source another side is called drain see both are symmetrical source and drain and then in the piece of straight if you take a 2d view what you see is uh, this is a channel and then this is your uh, ohmic contact n plus and then source is here and then drain is here and then you got a gate here so if you compare with bjt then this is kind of your base equivalent of gate is base equivalent of source is emitter equivalent of drain 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 is uh, uh, collector equivalent of drain is collector and then this is a piece of straight so the representation is a little bit different you can see here one line here gate and then another line and then this is uh, s this is d so then here the arrow is out why because it is called n mos we will study this so the arrow is outward means it is called n mos means we are using a piece of straight then it is called n mos so we will come to that uh, arrow direction so this is a general representation of mos transistor and then this region is called a channel because this is a channel where the electrons are flowing source and drain are attached to the substrate through n plus regions because direct connection will not make a good ohmic contact as i said it will not give you a good ohmic contact and then n type mos is called n mos why it is called n type means you are using a piece of straight so please don't name the mos transistor based on the substrate if you are using a piece of straight we will name it as n mos negative n means negative means in your channel you will get electrons as the carriers so that is the reason we call it as n mos anyway we will come to that point in the coming slides so state of the art mos so in the state of the art mos you will see here we will have an oxide layer here they will use a polysilicon and then what i want to show you is uh, this gap that is 8 so around 90 nanometer so if the channel length is 90 nanometer this is called a 90 nanometer process technology so when people say that okay we got 28 nanometer technology means the 28 nanometer is not the size of the transistor some students uh, get confused when they ask oh we got 28 nanometer technology then they might think that 28 nanometer is the size of the transistor it is not the size of the transistor it is a length of the channel so when people say that 28 nanometer technology or 12 nanometer technology or ibm said they will have 8 nanometer technology in the future means they are talking about this width of the channel so this 90 nanometer means this technology is called 90 nanometer process technology so not the size of the transistor the size of the transistor will be a bit higher than this one 90 nanometer so if you are using a, for example 
uh, we are designing a CMOS chip with 28 nanometer technology. But then the transistor size is around 150 by 150 nanometer, 150 by 180 nanometer, not 28 nanometer. So 28 nanometer is the width of the channel. So that is a process technology people are talking about. This channel width is called process technology. So this length is 90 nanometer. Today, this is maybe 10 years ago. Today, the width of the channel, this width of the channel is, you know how much, 12 nanometer, you can check. That is 12 nanometer, 1, 2 nanometer. That is a technology advancement, the length of the channel. So people call it as 12 nanometer technology. Another thing is you can see the oxide thickness. That is 18 angstrom, means 1.8 nanometer. That is a very thin. That is a uh, process technology, 1.8 nanometer or 18 armstrom. That is a thickness. Then, because here you got an N plus, then you got a P substrate, then it will form a diode here. Because this is an N type, this is a P type. So you can see a diode here. It will form a diode here. The device is symmetric. So either of the N plus region can be source or drain in the chip. Because when you buy a MOS transistor, you cannot reverse your drain and source. It will not be symmetric because they connect an external diode outside. So when you buy a discrete component, you can't you know, reverse your uh, drain and source. It's on the chip, yes, it is symmetric. But when you buy a discrete one, they put a, protect, uh, one, they, they put a diode for the protection. So you can't you know, uh, change your source and drain. But by fabrication topology, it is kind of you can swap drain and source. Formation of channel, then how this will work? So what we can understand is, so what we will do is we will ground drain, we will ground source, we will ground drain. Then we will connect a small voltage at the gate. So when you connect a small voltage at the gate, what is happening is you connect this voltage with respect to this substrate actually. See, this voltage, if you connect one volt here, that one volt is connecting with respect to this ground. This ground is connected to this ground. This ground is connected to this ground. It means your gate ground is connected to source. Gate ground is connected to drain. So when you apply some voltage, you are applying with respect to this ground or with respect to drain and source. Then this is a representation. Then how it will work? So initially what will happen is you slowly increase the voltage. So from here, you are increasing the voltage from 0 volt, 0 0.1 volt, 0 0.2 volt. So when you slowly increase your voltage, so this is a positive. So when what will happen is you get the positive charges here. So when you get the positive charges here, the P substrate, you already said the majority carriers are holes. Then when you get this positive charge, what will happen is you know this, this thickness. This thickness is only around 1.8 nanometer, couple of atom thick, very, very close. So when you have this positive charge, because the P substrate got majority carriers uh, as uh, holes, it will repel the holes. Because here you got positive charge, it got lots of positive charges in the P substrate, it will repel it. So initially it will form a depletion region, small depletion region close to this region. There won't be any positive charges because you got positive charge, initially it will repel the holes down so that you get a small depletion region. Then when you increase a little bit more the voltage, maybe this is some, some voltage X volt, then you are trying to increase more voltage. Then what will happen is it will attract the electrons. So, so more electrons will come. So then that is the reason the channel is made of electrons. Then a question for you. Because P substrate got uh, electrons as the minority carrier, but then you are getting lots of electrons here. This positive charge is attracting lots of electrons here. How can you get more electrons there? Because that electrons are higher than what it got in the P substrate. So you, from the N plus yeah, 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 so from the N plus region, also electrons will come. When you have more positive charges here, it will obviously attract electrons from this P region, minority carriers, but then from N plus also electrons will come to this channel. See, then here you are getting, and here you are getting a channel that is made of electrons in the P substrate. Usually in the P substrate, the current is due to holes. Majority carriers are holes. The major, the major carrier is hole, and the current will be due to major current is due to holes. But here what you have done is when you have connected positive charge here, Initially, 
for small voltages it tripled the holes and then when you connected more positive charges it started attracting the electrons from n plus region and p substrate and then these electrons will come here because you got more positive charges here and then this electrons that is forming a channel here and then this channel is inside p substrate in the p substrate you are getting a channel made of electrons so that is the reason we call it as n mos this is called call it as n mos negative mos means your channel is negative so that is the reason not the substrate so when we say n mos negative mos means your channel is made of electrons and then you got the channel of electrons see when you get this channel if you apply a potential difference between your source and drain you can move this electrons and then you can control the electron flow this weak flow using a small voltage here so that is the reason mos is a voltage controlled current source again you are controlling the current between source and drain using a voltage at the gate so again it is similar to bjt voltage controlled current source mos also is a voltage controlled current source but then here we don't have any doping to adjust the current like in the so bjt it is very easy to understand the mos operation so first the holes are repelled by the positive gate voltage see that's what here when you increase slowly the positive charge leaving behind the negative ions and forming a depletion region initially next electrons are attracted to the interface from p region and n plus regions creating a channel we call it as inversion layer sometimes people use inversion layer means you are getting a channel made of electrons in the p substrate means kind of inversion layer so that is the reason we call it as inversion layer it is not made of holes but made of electrons the gate potential the voltage here at which the channel begin to appear is called threshold voltage so that is the reason we often talk about in the most transistor there is a threshold voltage for bjt you got vb around 0.7 volt then only it will start you know you get forward bias same way you got in the most we call it as a threshold voltage that is around 300 to 500 millivolt means when it is 100 millivolt what will happen is you only will get this depletion region so you don't have any electrons here when you have 300 millivolt then this channel start to appear so that is the reason we call it as a threshold voltage the gate potential at which channel begins to appear is called a threshold voltage that's how we get a threshold voltage for uh, most transistor then what we'll do is we connect a potential difference between source and the drain so when you connect it you can move this electron and then this big electron flow is uh, controlled using this uh, gate voltage so that is the most oper operating principle of mos so when you plot it so what you can do is so you can connect a constant vg that is above the threshold voltage then you got id that is a drain current that is flowing through this one because you got a potential difference between drain and the source because this ground is connected to this ground so you got a potential difference so when you plot id drain current versus vg so you can also plot then what you can do is you connect a particular vd and then you slowly increase the vg and then you measure this current so then what will happen is uh, initially you are increasing the vg so you already got a vd that is fixed maybe say you connected here 2 volt and then here it is 0 volt and then you don't have any channel formation so that is the reason you don't have any drain current then you are increasing this voltage gate voltage slowly so when you increase slowly you get the inversion layer and then what will happen is uh, when you get the threshold voltage maybe 300 millivolt then the drain current started to flow because then the channel is formed so that is reason you get a characteristic something like this and this is called a threshold voltage and then this is n mos transistor so this is called n mos because you got electrons as the majority carrier because we are using a p substrate if you are using a n substrate this will be made of holes this channel then we call it as p mos so this is called n mos because the channel is made of electrons you are using a p substrate you can also make the same uh, transistor uh, uh, fabrication on an n substrate then we call it as a p mos we will study that one so this is called n mos because the majority carriers here are holes but the channels channel is formed due to electrons so that is the reason negative mos n mos based on the channel we name the transistor n mos then you see the characteristics it is pretty much similar to your bjt 
see different VGS1 that is equal to VB1, so v, VB1, VB2, VB3 kind of BJT and then you are getting kind of you know same characteristics but then the only difference is uh, here for BJT we call it as uh, active region but for most it is called a saturation region and then this region is called a triode region but for BJT it is called a saturation. I don't know why they have named it like that. See, this is a forward active region and then that is saturation. That is for BJT. But then here, when you say most saturation region means that is the region you should be operating. So I don't know why they did it. Maybe they want to confuse you so that you lose a mark. So this is called a saturation mode. And then please don't confuse with the BJT. So BJT saturation means that is equivalent of a triode mode in the case of MOS. MOS saturation is called a triode region. MOS operating region is called a saturation mode. Means your active region in the case of BJT is equivalent of saturation mode. So the characteristics are pretty much similar. Yeah, this insulation. Yes, it can break down. Yeah, but then that is normally a big number. Yeah, definitely it will break down. Yeah, yeah, one point, uh, around 1.8 nanometer. So that is the reason the chip, you are not going to connect 10 volt. So yeah, yeah you, you connect like 5 volt, and then when the speed is increasing, you need less voltage swing. Then you will be connecting less. Yeah, so then if you look at this region, for the most region, this region, the, though the characteristics look somewhat similar, but then for most region, this region is a bit linear region. Because for BJT, what is happening is this region is kind of, you know, slope is more, and then it is coming constant current. But for the most, what is happening is this region is a bit more linear. So in the triode mode, you get a linear region. Means a bit ohmic region is there, more ohmic region. Maybe here you get a bit more straight line. Ohm's law, it is obeying Ohm's law. But here the Ohm's law obeying is a very, very small, maybe a little bit region here. After that, it is kind of, the slope started coming. So in the triode mode, there's a bit more ohmic nature here. That is the only difference between these two characteristics. Linear or ohmic region, that side. Then, so if we take this region, so now I am going to take is linear or ohmic region, means I am going to zoom this region, see this dotted line, this region, then what I can get is a kind of a straight line. So ID versus VD, and then if I don't draw the remaining, this region is, I get a straight line, and then uh, that is a ohmic region. So in the ohmic region, you know that we can find out the resistance. If we take, uh, because V equal to I into R. So if we take one by R, that is uh, V by I, you can calculate, that is called own resistance. So when you are, uh, when you are operating here, this region, you can find out what is the resistance when this is just on before the saturation region. Means uh, in the triode mode, you can find out what is the resistance of this channel if you find out the slope here. So on resistance you can find out. So then again different uh, gate voltages, you got a different on resistances. Means you can tune the resistance of the channel by varying different uh, uh, voltages at gate. So you can vary the voltage here and then you can vary the resistance of the channel here in the ohmic region, this region. And then that change is more in the case of most transistor than BJTs. BJTs also you can do, you can vary the resistance but that range is very, very small. But for most that range is a big. So that is the reason we have taken that part and studied separately. So for different uh, gate voltages you get a different resistance because different slope. The most characteristics are measured by varying BG while keeping BD constant. So we, what we have done is we kept the BD constant, we connected a fixed voltage, and then we have varied the BG. So when you varied the BG, what will happen is you have found a different slope in the triode region. Means you have got different resistances. Then you can also plot, uh, you can keep VG constant and then you can vary BD. Same with uh, your BJT. How you plot the characteristics? You keep your uh, base voltage constant, then you can vary your VCE. Or you can keep VC constant and vary your uh, base voltage. Same way you can do this. 
uh, for the MOS, MOS characteristics are measured by varying BG while keeping BD. Or you can vary BD and then you can, uh, uh, BG you can keep constant. So then you can plot the characteristics. Yeah, here you can see different volt gate voltages, you have got different on ratios. Like here VG3 got uh, small resistance than VG1. So that characteristics we can use for making a voltage controlled attenuator. Or then we can make uh, a voltage controlled resistance. So you can got a resistance, then that value you can vary using the voltage. You can use the MOS if you are operating in the linear region. Then the question, BJT also you can use, but then the BJT that range is very small. So that is the reason we can't use, BJT is not good. So the MOS is very good because you got a bigger range when you, when you want to use uh, as a switch, means in this region. So here for BJT, you can do the same thing. But then the problem is you don't get a, you get only a small range for the operation. You can vary the resistance of the uh, region between the collector and the uh, emitter, but then you got a very narrow range. You can't, you know, that mu not much useful. But uh, here you got a bigger range if you want to operate, like voltage controlled resistance. Because between source and drain, it is kind of a resistance uh, if you are operating in the triode region, and then this resistance value you can vary using the gate voltage. Then how to make use of this one? Like uh, now you got a voltage, so what I meant is, uh, so I have, a, I have an application. So my application is, uh, I got a resistance here, then maybe I can tell you an interesting application. So. Maybe this is a photo detector. So this is a photo detector. So my requirement is uh, maybe some car is maybe I designed a sensor. So night time, some car is, this is my driver. Some car is coming. If the headlight is on, I want to open a gate. You know, that's a simple application. Okay. Then you can do it in several ways, but then this is, uh, this, this way of doing is only to teach the uh, voltage dependent resistance. You know what I meant? Because this you can do in much elegant way than this way, but I have taken this example just to explain this voltage dependent resistance. Then what I can do is, uh, I can connect this photo detector. Then I can connect this, uh, from the photo detector you get the current. Then I will connect a current to voltage converter. So I to V converter. So I, I have to convert this current into voltage, and then uh, this is an amplifier. Then that voltage, I am going to connect to a MOS. So this is my MOS. This is my MOS gate. And then here what I have got is a, so this is a gate, and then you got that oxide here. Then this is a drain, and then uh, maybe this is a source and then this is a drain. Okay, so this is a here, and then this R, I will write R bracket voltage, because this resistance I can vary. Then what I can do is, uh, so when I have different voltage, this resistance is changing. But in order to make use of this one, say I am going to connect here, in the drain I am going to connect maybe some 5 volt. But then if I ground it here, then I can't make use of it. So I have to connect another resistance in parallel outside, that is R. You know what I meant? Then what will happen is, this voltage here, so Vs, so what is Vs? Vs equals 5 volt, how much is it? 5 volt into R by R, 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 R. So when you have a potential voltage divider, what is a, so when you have something like this, so this is V1, and then this is Vs, so this is R, maybe this is, a, this is Rs, this is R, so what is this voltage? Vs equal to V1 by Rs plus R into R. So then here same, 5 volt divided by R plus Rv into R, see? Then, then this is connected to a motor, and then this is a gate. So if the headlight is on, then the photo detector will detect, and then what will happen is uh, uh, 
then here I can put a comparator. So this is called a comparator. So comparator means, so when this uh, headlight is on, photo detector will generate some current. That will convert into voltage. So you get more voltage here. So that will happen is this resistance will decrease when your voltage is increasing. When this resistance is decreasing, what will happen? You are getting here more voltage. When you are getting more voltage, then what will happen is I will put a threshold here. So when the voltage is only, you can make a comparator, simple comparator, and then the voltage is above some voltage, then the motor should be on. So something like that, I will make here, maybe three volt is my cutoff. So if this channel is more than three volt, then this motor will be on. And when there is no light, this voltage will be, because this resistance will be very high, then this will be very high, so that your VS will be always less than three volt. You know what I meant? When the headlight is on, when car is coming, then what, I, what will happen is uh, the headlight is on so that the photo detector will get some uh, light and then the light will be converted into electrons, the current that will convert into voltage and then your gate voltage will be increasing. When your gate voltage is increasing, what will happen? This resistance will decrease. When this resistance is decreasing, what will happen? Then uh, this is very, very small. Then this will cancel out and you are approximately getting 5 volt. Then this voltage is more than 3 volt, then this motor will rotate and then the gate will open. You know what I meant? So this is kind of an application. Uh, we can make it. This is a simple application. Uh, don't think that you know this is the best uh, architecture. This is just to explain this uh, concept. So you need an external resistance to make use of this effect. That's what I wanted to tell you. Yeah, so then this has a very good application in the chip. I will tell you that application. So we need to connect another resistance to make use of this uh, uh, variable resistance. So when you have V in, then your V out. So your V out equal to V out by V in equal to R1 by Rm plus R1. So then when you have different gate voltages, you can vary this resistance. Then application. The best application is in auto gain control. So auto gain control means uh, that is in your mobile phone. So the same thing they have used in your mobile phone. What they have done is, uh, when you have your mobile phone, you got your amplifier. You got the antenna. From the antenna, the signal is received. It will go to a low noise amplifier, then a, a filter, mixer, and so on and so. Then the question is, uh, you take your mobile phone near to the tower, transmitting tower. Then your amplifier is not saturating. You know what I meant? If you get, get a constant gain, suppose somebody is asking you, OK, design the amplifier for your mobile phone antenna. So if you keep the antenna constant, what will happen is you go outside, maybe there is a tower, then your amplifier will be saturated. Then you come inside the room, then you don't have the signal. So in order to compensate that one, they came up with an idea of auto gain control. Auto gain control means uh, they will tap a little bit signal from the receiver, the amplifier, and then that will adjust your gain. So when you go near the tower, then uh, they will reduce the gain. When you are away from the tower, they will increase the gain. So that is the reason in mobile phone, you don't have any saturation uh, signal problem. And then, so something like this. So if you have an operation amplifier, this is just an example. Your gain equal to minus R1 by R2 plus R3 parallel RM. And then uh, if you vary this one, then what we can control is uh, you can vary this RM. So when you vary this RM, this output voltage is uh, different. Or something like in a previous example, instead of the gate, you connect there maybe another uh, receiver. Uh, and then uh, it's a simple, see. The implementation is a bit more complicated, but simple and simple way we can explain. Like you got anyway this circuit, then what you can do is, uh, so this region is maybe you are tapping from the antenna. So now what I will do is I will replace this with then. So here is your antenna. So this is your antenna. And then this is your amplifier. So that's a low noise amplifier. And then, so maybe I can draw it maybe properly. So this is your low noise amplifier. This is your antenna. And then this is your low noise amplifier. Then what you can do is, this is not exactly, then this is going here, and then this is your amplifier. Then in the amplifier, the gain is set using a resistance. So your gain directionally proportional to this Rm and then that resistance we have achieved using this MOS. So this MOS is, uh, so this is your gate. Okay, and then this is your, uh, maybe this is your resistance. 
So I'm just connecting. And then, so in your amplifier, your gain is uh, directly proportional to this RM. Maybe you have set like this. This is your RM. And maybe you connect another resistance here. Then what we can do is, uh, from here, you can tap a portion of your signal and then make a fraction. Maybe you are taking only a fraction. And then what will happen is, when you have more signal here, then what will happen is your gate voltage is more, and then your resistance is less, so that your gain is less. You know what I mean? Here output. When you, are, when you have less signal, then this gate voltage is uh, low, and then this resistance is big, so that your gain is big. Something like that you can think of a logic. So that's what auto gain. Well, this is a very primitive one to explain, but the auto gain is a bit more complicated, you can see here. So that's why you can use a kind of a variable gain. Uh, voltage dependent resistance like wherever you got uh, some application you want to vary the resistance value with respect to the voltage then you can use a MOS as the gate voltage decreases the output drops because the channel resistance increases here this type of gain control finds application in cell phones to avoid saturation near base stations so then now we are going to again go back to the topology. So when you look at the MOS transistor, you have got different uh, options. Like you can vary the increase the length, you can decrease the length, you have got so many parameters. So you got channel length, which I already discussed, with, that is L. Then oxide thickness, that is this oxide thickness. Then width, W, means width of the channel. Then when you vary these things, what is the effect? So if you vary the length, so when you vary the length, what will happen is you can, when you plot it ID versus VG for two MOS transistors, one got a small channel length, another got a bigger channel length. Then what will happen is uh, when, you, when you increase the channel length, the slope is coming down. So when the slope is coming down, what is happening? The resistance is increasing or decreasing? The resistance is decreasing. Again, when you increase the oxide thickness, when you increase the oxide thickness, then uh, again the same thing will happen. Your resistance will decrease. Then you can increase the uh, width. So width is this W. So if you increase the width, then what will happen is uh, your resistance will uh, increase. See, that's only, otherwise it will decrease. If you increase the channel length, resistance decreases. If you increase the gate thickness, the oxide thickness, gate oxide thickness, your uh, uh, resistance decreases. So I'm talking about this resistance, see the resistance, and then uh, in the channel, resistance in the channel. See, this is, this is a curve maybe you should be looking at. Because when you take a slope of this one, 1 by R is the, because this is ID, this is VD. So 1 by R is the resistance of this channel. So the resistance of the channel decreasing, resistance of the channel decreasing, but when you increase the width, the resistance of the channel will increase. So when you increase the width means uh, that is equivalent of connecting maybe two most transistors in parallel. So when you connect so many in parallel, you are actually increasing the width. Small gate length and oxide thickness is yield a low channel resistance, which will increase the drain current. So if you reduce the channel resistance, then your drain current will increase. As the gate width increases, the current increases due to a decrease in resistance. However, gate capacitance also increases, thus limiting the speed of the circuit. An increase in W, the width, can, can be seen as two devices in parallel. Means if you want to increase the width of your MOS, usually in the chip, they don't, they, are, they don't construct a bigger transistor, rather they will connect two in parallel, so you can increase the width. So here I can see, as the gate width increases, so your gate width increases, see here, the current increases due to the decrease in resistance. However, gate capacitance also increases, thus limiting the speed of current. So the oxide thickness, as he said, uh, when you reduce the oxide thickness, there is a problem because there could be leakage, it can break down quickly, but then still we will reduce the thickness. Why? Because when you increase the thickness of the oxide layer, what will happen is your capacitance, C equal to epsilon, epsilon A by D, because then you are increasing the dielectric constant. So if the capacitance is increasing, what will happen is speed will decrease. So the capacitance and speed will not go together. 
So more capacitance, less speed. So if you want to have your chip operating at a high frequency, like in the case of processor, then they will be having very thin layer of oxide. So that is a challenge in the material materials engineering. So the materials engineering, when you are using some okay some material in the foundry, they are using for uh, get oxide, this oxide material. But then maybe when you get to one one point two nanometer or one nanometer thickness, what will happen is it will start leaking. Then you can't use the same dielectric. Then you have to do some research and find out some new material that will provide you know better isolation. So that is the reason in the chip. Uh, foundries and IBM, Intel, they all got uh, materials engineering because you need a new type of materials. Because here, when you decrease the thickness, that oxide thickness, that is an important point. When you decrease the oxide thickness, your capacitance is decreasing. That is very good because then you can increase the speed. But when you decrease the oxide thickness, then you should have some good material. Otherwise, you, you, when you have one nanometer, less than one nanometer thickness, it can short or there, there will be leakage current. So channel potential variation, maybe I will start this one in the next lecture.